I'm Ernest Timmons. My business name is Ernest Timmons Carpentry, and we're going to do some pine today. We have a 8 by 12 wall, and we're going to put some pine on it in two different ways. We're going to go vertical and horizontal. And I'm going to start with the bottom chair rail section, and then after that I'll do the top section, and you'll see how that goes. Now we're starting the first piece on the end of the wall, and if you had a wall going this way, it would, this joint would get covered up, so you don't need to rip the first piece when you're beginning a wall that doesn't have pine on the other side. And for the first piece, you can face nail it, because when you do your chair rail, you can cover up all these nails. And you always have to start with the tongue out, because this is where you'll have to nail. The bottom you can nail on the face because your mop board will cover up all the nails. Tap them in, you don't want to tap them in really hard because you could dent the pine. And as you nail on an angle, it draws the other board to the other board and keeps them all tight. And you don't have to nail both sides as you're going because the tongue will hold the groove in on the other side of the board. Now we've come up to the window and now you dry fit it, you put it in and you can mark your framing and know where it has to be cut. With the measure through our window, get our pieces cut. I've made a stop for this table. I can put it right where the board needs to be cut and I cut all my pieces exactly the same.
when you get into an inside corner, sometimes you have a problem putting the board in. So what you can do, is instead of having a square edge, you can bevel it. Okay, now we can start with a different application of V-groove pine. This was just regular tongue groove, now we're going to do V-groove to add a different style, a different look. And this does have the tongue here, but you don't have to rip it off if you don't want to. You can cover it up with the chair rail. Make sure your ends are flush. Now this is very important, when you're nailing the top, you want to nail up above your crease here where the tongue and groove come together. You want to hold your nail up above and nail down at an angle to hold the pine in. Then use a nail set to finish the nail off. That way when the next piece comes down over it, it covers up your nail. Another trick too, if you had a knot right here, right where you had to nail, you don't want to try to put a nail through it because you'll just bust out the pine. The other trick you can do is if you put it right here in the V groove, you can hide your nail. Then you can fill it. Because on a flat surface, you'd be able to see that really easy. If you're forced to do it on the flat, that's fine. But that's a little trick. I've made the extension jam pieces for the window, cut out for the wall and the trim. And what you want to do is when you figure your width on your window, that's this measurement from here to there. Then you have to add your ears. So when you slide it in, it fits perfect to the wall. And then your side trim can set down on it and you can have a three-quarter reveal all the way around from your trim. So now I gotta screw it together. You have to pre-drill the pine first so it doesn't split. You want to go in about three-eighths from the edge of the wood to the center of your hole that you drill. You have to do the sill and the top. Oh, 
I prefer screws over nails for the simple reason that when somebody is on the sill or if something is on the sill, it doesn't get pushed down and separated, especially if you have painted trim or poly trim, it just it will separate. And you don't want that because then your finish work won't look very good. You'll see why when I go to put it in. So I pre-stop my screws in the holes. You want to make sure that this is pre-ripped for your sides to fit in. And you have to deduct three quarters and three quarters on top and bottom, which is a total of inch and a half. So whatever your finished opening is, you have to deduct an inch and a half for your length of your sides. The other thing you want to pay attention to is that your ripped edge is towards the window. So when you look at your trim, you want to make sure that the side you want is facing in and the ripped edge is away from you. And then what you do is you put all three sides together. You can do this on the floor, you can do this up, it depends on how careful you are. That's the reason for pre-starting your screws. And your extension jams will last a lot longer by doing it this way, especially if you have pets. One screw on one side, and then do the other side, and then that way it stays together for you. You can glue these together, but it doesn't really do a lot of good if you're just going to screw it together. Just take your extension jam and you slide it in. And then what you want to do, depending on how your window sets against the trim, you might have to lift one side up or the other and then what you'd have to do in that instance is place shims underneath to, to meet it. So what I'm going to do here just put a couple nails in to hold it stiff. And see, when I pound down, it doesn't separate here. If you nailed this together, it would separate because the nails would pull out. Keep it flush with your pine. Before we put our trim on, we need to finish the pine on the top. This can get a little tricky with one person, so sometimes you end up having to have two people. If you get one side started, then you can let go of another side.
You want to put a face nail here before you nail up here because otherwise it would just push your wood down and then you would have a crooked row of pine. I'm also using six penny galvanized finish, which is not too long of a nail because if you go longer, it would be a thicker shank and it would split out your pine. So six penny galvanized is what you'd like. What I've done here on the end of the pine is I've 45'd the end and you want to land the end of the cut somewhere in the middle of the stud so when your next piece goes over I've also 45 this side to cover up this so when your joint separates during the dry months of the year you still have some wood behind it so you don't have a gap sometimes pine will dry that way and it never goes back what you can do in that instance is just use some natural pine filler to fill it in You don't need to nail both sides, just the side that overlaps. That will hold that in all at once. And then when your next piece comes down, it locks both of them together so your joint is equal. If you're working up against the ceiling, a little trick is to take either a chisel or a little mini pry bar and you could wedge it in between to pull it down for you if you can't get it in. And if you are finishing to a ceiling, pine to pine, what you need to do too is you need to back bevel this edge so when you lock it in you can roll it in easier because if you don't the back edge will hit the top pine and it won't be able to allow it to go in. So you need to back bevel that top edge either on a table saw or with a block plane.
When using clear pine, you want to be careful of your pencil marks. You'll want to erase them or sand them off before you put the trim together. Otherwise, you'll see it when you go to poly. Now the top. Now that we've finished the window, now we're going to do some chair rail to cover up this and to add it some style. And there we have a finished wall.